Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner, very privileged. It's been a treat to have with us right now Rabbi Marvin Heyer, the founder and dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles, and he's the first Orthodox rabbi in history to give the invocation at a presidential inauguration, which he did yesterday for President Donald J. Trump. Shavuot Tov, thank you for joining us. And how does it feel uh, to... Go ahead, Shavuot Tov. Yes, thank you. Shavuot Tov. Thank you. You are, uh, Baruch Hashem, listen, I was uh, thrilled to be asked. I didn't uh, have to think about it because uh, it's Poshit Menschlichkeit. When you live in a country where Yiddishkeit flourishes, well, you could be a chosid, you could wear a stramel, you could, uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, with a boot and tayus, <clears throat> and nobody, nobody will fault you for it, unlike what the situation is in Europe for Jews today. To have turned down a request like that would be the height of chutzpah. <clears throat> and there were, I'm, I'm honored that I was asked. <clears throat> there was never any question on my part. And despite the fact that if you take a look in some of the liberal media, like in the forward, they claim that maybe they had an influence on what I said. It's la hoya v'la nivra. No, you did it on your own. You didn't consult with said. the White House. You didn't consult never, with... Uh, no, not at all. And, uh, you know... Not at all. They were. They they invited me, and they uh, they we were allowed to say whatever we wanted to choose. Of course, the only limitation that we have is limitation of time, because that's a, a, lo- a large program. So they wanted to know the word count, which would indicate to them how long it would be, so that we make sure that we complied with the request. Now, let me ask this question. You are the first Orthodox rabbi, so you must be very proud. You did a wonderful job yesterday. How did you get to be chosen? Because there's so many rabbis in this country. How did you get to be the chosen one? That secret they never revealed to me. The press has been speculating. I know the Christian family for many years. I do not not know how the decision was made. I also know um, a number of people. uh, I knew the... um, the um, person who was in charge of producing the entire uh, inauguration. That him I know from Los Angeles. He's not Jewish. He's a wonderful friend of the state of Israel. And um, so I don't know quite uh, how, the, how the decision came, but when they, I was called by the inauguration committee, I accepted immediately. The 35,000 donation that uh, Kushner gave to you had no, no influence. That's ri- completely ridiculous. First of all, uh, you know, the Sun Wiesel Center, <coughs> it, 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 I've known the Kushners for decades. They're wonderful people. They're great college docker. <coughs> and that was not, uh, that would not play a role in a decision like this. In other words, if I, if I thought it was wrong to do it, <coughs> we've, in the past, differed with many major institutions and corporations from which we've received money and we've taken them on. And uh, that never would enter the consideration. That's completely uh, false reporting. Now, you mentioned before the, the forward and others critics, you were in a tremendous amount of pressure not to do it. I don't understand why it's a big honor, but you're under a lot of pressure. In fact, one Orthodox well, rabbi, Haskell Luxing, did re, uh, respond to the pressure and didn't do it. So what kind of pressure were you under and how did you withstand it? First of all, uh, there were some 3,000 uh, petitions. Uh, you, you know, people signed petitions. I got hundreds of emails and calls from all over the country and as a matter of fact, from Canada as well, <clears throat> urged telling me I did the right thing, not to listen at all. And I wouldn't have listened to them because, number one, it would be, as I told you before, a lack of the cherets. One of my father's favorite quotes from uh, Pirkeovos and from Chazal is, the cherets kod Torah, where it's an union that can cause harm to the Jewish community. Look, Imagine a rabbi, there hasn't been a rabbi, period, the inauguration since 85, since Reagan. If I would have said no, even if I wanted to say, let's say no, I was noted to it, which is not the truth. I, w- I would say to myself, you know what kind of anti-Semitism this would cause from non-Jews? Say, look, they know, Jews thrive in America, and this is how they treat the transition, the, the inauguration, which happens once every four years. It would be a terrible gesture on my part. And I didn't accept for those reasons. I accepted because I hope that Donald Trump will be a great president. 
and it's the right thing to do. But my question, what kind of pressure were you under? Because I know, like I oh, said... And this is not pressure, but people... The Simon Wiesel Center has 400,000 members. If you get the petition signed by 3,000 members, this is clean as <laughs> It would have no impact on me whatsoever. Now, I, 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 it was a tremendous sanctification of God's name, your speech. You quoted from Psalms. You quoted God. You mentioned, if I forget the old Jerusalem, were you sending a subtle message to the president-elect to move the embassy to Jerusalem by saying that? Uh, absolutely. I was sending a message to the world because the, the entire world uh, tunes in to the inauguration of American president. I was saying how false Secretary Kerry's remarks were that blaming the whole failure of achieving a two-state solution on settlements. What nonsense. Why didn't he say, how come? Settlements have been discussed for 15, 20 years. Not once has there been a Security Council meeting to discuss how can we dislodge the terrorist Hamas from Gaza. Why don't they discuss that? Why isn't that the principal obstacle for peace in the Middle East? And this was a complete fraud. To have done that 12 or 15 days before a new president takes office. So absolutely, it was it was a message to all of them. There were four four presidents sitting on the on the dais, many former Secretary of State and new Secretary of State designates. And the message was, "Don't forget Yerushalayim, the eternal capital of the Jewish people." Period. I love the message. You were standing next to President Obama. Did you mention that to him as well? Did you speak to him? Oh, well, yeah, after when I uh, went by, uh, I uh, shook hands with, uh, uh, with all the pr- first with uh, President Trump and uh, Vice President Mike Pence, and then with all the other presidents except for Jimmy Carter, because <clears throat> President Obama extends, uh, put his hand out to me and said, Rabbi, and so I uh, shook his hand. I have nothing against him. I differed with him tremendously on the Iran deal. I think it was a terrible mistake. I think the settlement, uh, the last thing, blaming Israel for settlement, was a disaster. <clears throat> but, uh, of course, I, you know, out of cordiality and respect, I shook his hand as well. But did you say anything course, to him about your message, what you were trying to implement? No, no, no. I, I did get a lot of uh, pats on the back from congressmen, both Democrats and Republicans, and uh, received a... Uh, I, 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 I was told later that the uh, that the president liked it. President Trump liked it very much. Did you get to speak to the president uh, at the? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. I went over to the president, and uh, he congratulated me on on the remarks. And um, before I went back, uh, you know, to uh, to my seat. Now you mentioned you shook the hands of various presidents. Did President Jimmy Carter try to shake your hand? Did you pass him by? No, no, I did. I didn't go over to him. I, I didn't go over. To him. He, he, first of all, he was sitting in the fourth row, and I didn't uh, go. He, he, President Carter is a uh, he, he's a def- he, he he believes in the Palestinian narrative. Period. Well, we're going to see how President, well, ex President Obama is going to be on this issue. What they did right before uh, he left office with the United Nations vote is certainly something which is unsettling, to put it mildly, and it certainly is. It, creates a major problem for Israel around the world today. And it also sets back the peace negotiations. Yeah, but fortunately, listen, that's not the opinion of uh, President Trump. And I'm sure that um, he's going to make that very clear. And let's hope that he follows through on his pledge uh, to uh, switch the embassy to Yerushalayim and uh, to make sure that everyone knows that the United States does not support the division of Yerushalayim. How much time were you allocated to speak, by the way? Did they give you a set time period? Yes, they said a minute to a minute and a half. Okay, I think you're about almost two minutes. Did you, are we, and you spoke well. How long did it take you to craft it? Would you go through different ideas? What made you settle on no, the well, what I, yeah, What I did is as follows. First, <clears throat> what were the critical ideas that I wanted to put forth? One was that th- we know that the, in the midbar, the man appeared. Then it disappeared. There's no more money. And uh, so, you, uh, whatever is it's the Oretz Nosan Les Bey Adam means do something. So that was the first theme. <clears throat> the other theme was don't forget the Aniim, those who can't help themselves. We have to help them. That's the, the basic uh, fun, fundamental principle of Tzedakah and our Ravelis. And so that was incorporated. Then, of course, 
not to forget Zion. Only the Jews, for 3,500 years, are still treated differently than every other nation in the world. No one pays attention to all the fights going on anywhere in the world, except for what takes place in the Middle East. Nobody knows that there are more than 5 million square miles that make up all the Arab countries in the Middle East, and about 12 to 17,000 square miles that make up the state of Israel. Yet they blame the they blame all the owners of the state of Israel. Unfortunately, so we have to say something about Israel. No, I'm clever how you incorporate Zion in Yerushalayim, quoting Psalm, which I thought was a terrific way of doing that. How do you account for you made a sanctification in God's name, and today we found many Jews in synagogues uh, that participated in marches against the president of the United States. I saw one in Manhattan, hundreds of Jews milling about outside a conservative synagogue with drums and beating. So there's a desecration of Shabbos, a desecration of God's name by going in such a forceful manner against the president. How do you react when people say, what's going on in the Jewish community? No, well, first of all, look. I can't tell people what to do. I disagree with them. And I think, especially when you have a president in a very difficult time of history, when there's a lot of piling on on the small Israel, when half the world's Jewish community lives in Israel, where if anything ever happened, chas v'sholem, to the state of Israel, we would, have, we would suffer a second Holocaust. The Holocaust took six million. Six million now live in Israel, more than six million Eden. Israel is sent the field for us. And uh, so to, so I would not participate on the first day of a demonstration against the president. We don't, he, he, he doesn't even know where his office yet is. And if he does, he hasn't sat in a chair yet. <laughs> and lost him this, before, before he sits down and takes a pen and does anything, they're already, they're already saying a Tugnish. Right, which is unfortunate. I, I, I know that you don't like to tell people what they want to put in your rabbinical hat for a moment. I've asked quite a few rabbis this question. You probably saw the reports that Ivanka and Jared uh, got permission from an Israeli rabbi to ride in a car last night to go to the inaugural balls. So how did it make you feel that they did that? They're observing Jews. They got a rabbi's permission. What kind of signals does that send about Shabbos? Look, look I could tell you the two things I can tell you. I'm not a Pisic. There are very, I leave that to the post game in the Orthodox community <clears throat> for them to, to uh, answer that Shiloh. But I can tell you one thing. I was with them last Pesach. Happened to be, we, we've been together Pesach for many, many years. And it happened last Pesach we were again together in the same hotel. And I know that Jared, they didn't have in, my, in the minion, the first minion, someone to say Shira Shira from a cloth. He got up and immediately did it flawless. And I can also tell you about Ivanka, that when women, if you have an early minion, the women usually come, I'm not saying Moshe Haram, women, but women don't usually show up at 7. If we had an early minion... You're about 7 a.m., not 7 p.m., so let's make that clear. Right, <laughs> right. So she was, she was already a davening. So, look, they say they asked the POSIC. I don't know who they asked. I'm not a POSIC. But I would not question their total commitment to Yiddishkeit because I know it firsthand that it happens to be genuine and real. Nishkefumfit. Certainly, and it's an interesting question which for some reason is burning up on social media. Are you going to continue that relationship with the Trump administration? The doors are open to to well, have influence. Well, of course, uh, uh, why? Well, of course, uh, of course. <clears throat> it's in the interest of the Jewish community to be in contact with any president of the United States, uh, p particularly a president of the United States that says that he is going to refocus, uh, you know, uh, the United States uh, friendship with the state of Israel. No, I think it's important, and thank you for uh, being with us, and thank you for a wonderful invocation. Final question is, we seem to have some very deep divisions in the Jewish community in general, and especially when it comes to the president, I've never seen anything like it where people are so vocal. I've been attacked for some of the programs we've had, and we've been balanced on the air. I've never seen anything like it, and I'm sure you've never seen anything like it too. How do we heal the divisions within the Jewish community? Well, we, we, we have to heal it because... <clears throat> what's at stake 
we, as I pointed out in the beginning of the interview, we don't want chas v'sholom. What ha- what is happening in Europe for the Jewish communities to travel to the United States? We need a strong, vibrant American Jewish community that respects where Orthodox Judaism doesn't have to fear that somebody wears a kapota or a gatel is walking the street. Can't do that in Europe today. We don't want that to come to America. We have to heal the division because the alternative is street fights, chas v'shol of a civil war. We don't want to relive the 1860s, north and south. It's in everybody's interest to solve this with the cherit. Donald Trump was elected according to the Constitution. It doesn't matter who, had, who, has more elect, who has more votes. The Constitution says it goes according to the Electoral College. He's our president. Everybody should be saying the same thrillers. We hope he winds up to be a great president. Not to take him down before he's had a chance to even organize his furniture in the White House. Exactly. And by the way, there's some rabbis that are changing the prayers. We have a prayer for the president. They're changing that to omit any reference to Donald Trump. You've seen that, right? Well, I haven't seen it, but I think that, listen, one thing we can say about Jews, we're not perfect, and we have some naronim in the Jewish community as well. That is a very nourish <laughs> idea that will get nowhere. Absolutely, because everybody needs our help, even when, no matter who the president, they need divine assistance to make sure they do the right thing. Rabbi Marvin Heyer, dean and founder of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in Los Angeles, the first Orthodox rabbi in American history to give an invocation and inauguration of a president. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sanctifying God's name. Look forward to having you back on a future broadcast. Good to all your listeners. Good And we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned.